I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about don't be fooled by the glitz. <laughs> <laughs> glitz, yes. One of the problems with narcissists is that they are full of glitz. And glitz is always nifty and attractive. What I want to do in this section is go into more specifics on some of the traits of the narcissist so that you won't miss them should you find yourself in a relationship with one. And believe me, it can happen to the best of us, okay? Narcissists are quite attractive. All right, so I'm going to talk about some specific traits that you may see. Okay. All right, the first one is lack of empathy. And this is huge. Mm -hmm. Huge, okay? The narcissist spends his life trying to manage his own needs, which are overwhelming, okay? And he has very little interest or emotional response to the needs or sufferings of others. So look, honey, I got my own problems here trying to keep my balloon inflated. All right? Yep. Now, I may learn to look like I'm listening to you, but take a good close look. Mm -hmm. You might listen to a long tale of woe from your narcissistic partner or friend. If, however, you want to tell your narcissistic partner about your own tale of woe, they famously begin yawning, stretching, and talking about how exhausted they are. Mm. Okay, I've told you my story. I feel better now. I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, you have a story? Oh, well. And it's important, too, to note here that narcissists can learn empathy. They can learn to look like they have it. Yes, exactly. exactly. Like this false... Yeah this false empathy yep. they don't really feel it but they know right. how to behave so yep. that you believe they have empathy yeah yep. and i've also heard that narcissists are the worst people to bring to couples therapy because they can learn how to manipulate you better or well they, the first thing they will do is try to manipulate the ther that the too. therapist of mm -hmm. course yeah i'm not going to give them that much credit if they have a half smart therapist mm -hmm. yeah yeah but i've heard that and that's being said fairly frequently and they're seductive enough sometimes they can get a therapist to sort of side with them. Mm. And if that happens, you need a different couples therapist. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would not see a couples pair with uh, a narcissist unless I had seen each of them together a couple of times first. Okay? All right, so if you want to tell your narcissistic partner your sad story, tough luck. So these people have very little empathy, and I'm thinking about the story again of Rachel and John. John was a surgeon with no empathy. That scares me, right? Yep. Um, empathy, Margaret, is, is just absolutely crucial yep. for any kind of relationship. And just to review, empathy, it's different from sympathy. Sympathy means I heard your story and I feel kind of bad with you. Empathy suggests that I feel it with you. Okay? Like if I hear the story of the children who were just shot up, that I can sort of feel the parents' feelings if I have empathy. It's kind of frightening to find out that some people in some professions have little empathy, but unfortunately it's true. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's absolutely huge. It's impossible to love anyone unless you have a capacity for empathy. And because the narcissist doesn't fall in love with their caretaker normally. They don't develop it when most people do. Okay, if you develop normally, you fall in love with that nice person who soothes you and feeds you and talks to you and plays with you. But if that doesn't happen, other people can end up kind of irrelevant to you. All right? Yeah. All right, grandiosity is one of the famous traits of a narcissist. Um, and that can be glitzy, right? Grandiosity is, a, is present when a person tends to exaggerate their accomplishments and talents and connections to important people. Oh, I've just met you. Let me tell you how wonderful I am. Mm -hmm. I actually personally know Craig Kenneth. 
<laughs> right? Um, so the grandiose narcissist, even if he hasn't accomplished much less, hasn't accomplished much real stuff in life, will try to tell you that he has. Okay? Um, it's all a show. It's all a show, exactly. If you haven't accomplished it yet, they're, they are sure it's coming along for them very soon. For example, I talked to a guy who knows a guy who is friends with this billionaire venture capitalist, and I know that he is going to want to invest in my business and my new idea right away. Now, you may not know the guy that knows the guy that knows the billionaire, and you certainly don't know that he's going to want to invest with you right away. But you can sound pretty grandiose by saying that. All right? And to the, to the narcissist, it doesn't make any difference whether you did it or not. It's the idea that you conv convince people that you did. Basically, they want to be recognized in a big way for merely maintaining big fantasies. So convinced are they of their impending success that they already act as if it was a reality. Okay? And I can also see them being philanthropists or wanting to come all oh, as philanthropists. Oh, yes. I gave all this money mm -hmm. um, to, yes. Okay? And I have worked trying to help disabled <laughs> children all of my life by donating 20 cents once to the March of Dimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Entitlement. Now for me, I think entitlement is the most obnoxious symptom that there is. And when I was trying to learn about it, I did what I sometimes do, which is I tried to act entitled for a couple of days um, mm -hmm. to see what it felt like. And the people I worked with and usually had lunch with told me I couldn't come anymore <laughs> until I was finished with that experiment. But I told them that I deserved to have them listen to me. Okay. Entitlement is the belief that one should be accorded special treatment, typically without reasonable cause. I mean, you should be wonderful. You should absolutely revere me only because I'm Margaret. All right. I didn't do anything to deserve it, but that's. I, but I'm claiming everything. All right. Entitlement involves the belief that everyone should comply with your demands, no matter how unreasonable they are. Entitled people do not want to wait in lines. They always expect upgrades of all kinds. Ever been on a flight with a narcissist or in a hotel with a narcissist while they demand all the upgrades? Okay? But the clerk should have already known before they walked up that they deserved all the best of everything. And they can become quite unpleasant and chronically complaining if they don't get what they think they deserve. They deserve the very best and nothing less. Early on, Pay attention to how your partner treats service employees. Mm, yep. This is huge. Because that will show you entitlement right up front. Margaret's often in a rage. Huh? <laughs> you said you're often in a rage. Yes, I am. With the service employees. Yes, in a rage with them. Yeah. Because I'm a narcissist and I'm the only one who's important here. You see why the people didn't want to have lunch with me anymore? <laughs> How does he treat bartenders, valet, parking staff, restaurant servers, desk clerks? He will, on the other hand, become very friendly with anybody he thinks can do something for him. All right? So if you're beneath him in his estimation, he will treat you like dirt and make all kinds of demands of you. All right? And People are famous, and I think there's another component to this, but people are famous for giving um, waitresses or waiters an extremely hard time. And I always think that part of that is a real throwback to the early problems, because servers feed you like your parents did, okay? And if your parents didn't do it right, you're going to take it right out on that server. That was too well done. That was underdone. I didn't like the sprig of whatever it was you gave me, you know, the green stuff. This is where I see it come out the most in, in current clients. I had a woman one time who could not help herself from beating up servers in a restaurant. She would complain mm -hmm. to them about what was on the menu like they had anything to do with it and overall give them an extremely hard time. The other people she liked to torture was the staff at a doctor's office oh, because no. doctors are supposed to take care of you. Why weren't they jumping six feet every time she called? Okay. She was working on it, however, and probably had su some success. So I thought she was somewhere between narcissist and borderline. But anyway, if it's a caretaker person and they're not doing a good job, tough noogies. 
And that can include you as a partner mm, over time. Sure. Oh, of course. Of course. You're supposed to take care of me. Why mm -hmm. aren't you doing it? All right. Like I say, the narcissist will be horrible to them, but very friendly with anybody he thinks he, who can do something for him. Somebody was telling me, somebody who lives in, a, in an elderly community where people are relatively wealthy, was telling me the other day that a friend of his spends half his time on the phone calling car dealers and furniture sellers and all sorts of people to give him a discount and telling them that he really needs this discount. And I thought, I wouldn't have thought of that before. He's a narcissist who deserves special treatment at all times. Mm. Okay? All right. So, if you find that somebody's entitled, run. Okay? And I don't, I don't have to earn anything. I just deserve it all before I do anything. All right. Now let's go on to manipulation. Narcissists are manipulative. Because what else do they have to offer? Not much. What does it mean to be manipulative? Narcissists are masterful at twisting the situation and working the rules to get what they want. Even more frustrating, they will turn things around in such a way that you may ultimately give them what they want and exhaust yourself in the process. Now that takes a lot of skill, right? Repeatedly, I observe stories in which the narcissist is superb at spinning his circumstances. For example, he says to his partner, after being abandoned by my father like I was, and how it affected my self-esteem, you have to understand why working would be so difficult for me. Okay? In other words, I was so damaged by my father not accepting me and loving me that I really can't work um, for a man. Now, personally, I would say, find a woman boss and shut up. <laughs> but that would not be welcome. Um, so the woman he was with ended up working two jobs. All right? Um, so she was still trying to protect him and rescue him by keeping him happy. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I'm just too damaged to work. I've wow. never even tried that one. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you haven't either. Mm. Gaslighting is another popular term. Ultimately, gaslighting is an attempt to distort your reality and make you question your own sanity. Example, here are some of favorite phrases of narcissists. You are overreacting and making a big thing out of nothing. You're mm. crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You that, don't trust me? That's it, exactly. <laughs> oh, very good, colleagues. Mm. Um, you are overreacting and a big thing out of nothing. You're too sensitive. In other words, when I call you all sorts of awful names, you get upset. Mm -hmm. You're too sensitive. You took that wrong. That's not what happened. You are remembering that all wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Again, questioning her sanity and her grasp on reality. I never said that. Why can't you remember things correctly? All right? So you see how the, how the narcissist will try the manipulation. All right. And they can also twist things around to make you look like the crazy person. Oh, absolutely. And I don't know if you remember the time we, we did the story of the movie, Gaslight, mm -hmm. um, where the man has very systematically led his wife to believe that she's crazy. Yep. He would go in the attic to search down the family fortune he thought was hidden up there. And when she said the gas lights would dim when he turned them on up there, um, and he would say, no, 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 nothing, nothing like that happened. He almost had the woman thinking she was crazy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. And what's also so sad is that for the average person, a relationship is about love. It's about intimacy, connection. Yeah. For the narcissist, it's really about power and control. Yeah. I can imagine many of you are listening to, listening to this thinking, how could somebody do this and why would somebody want to do this? It's all about power. Yes, and it's all about if they lose what they call their narcissistic supplies. Now, a narcissist sees an intimate partner as a narcissistic supply, meaning that this person helps keep their balloon inflated, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're threatened by that, they get crazy. And mm -hmm. they're terrified of abandonment. Terrified, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the control and manipulation is to keep you from abandoning them. 
Right. And that goes for the borderline as well as for the narcissist. Right. So, and a narcissist never ever takes responsibility. Narcissists are like Teflon. Nothing sticks. <laughs> they don't take responsibility for anything. They are master deflectors and try to avoid the blame when lying, cheating, stealing, and everything in between. Okay? Uh, they make up complex excuses and can rationalize anything. When they finally get called out, they immediately claim that they're being persecuted, usually for no reason at all. Okay? When you are with someone who takes no responsibility for anything, words, actions, or feelings, it is no way to have a relationship because you can't. Yeah. All right? So, I'm responsible for nothing that goes wrong, and you are responsible for everything. Mm. Okay? So, that's my narcissism spiel for today, and I only have eyes for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the part too that's very difficult about this is that all of this happens very gradually. Yes. So gradually that you might not notice it until it's gotten to the point where it's really bad or very severe. Right. And if you're with this guy who's getting upgrades everywhere and is demanding to be treating be treated beautifully and wonderfully, it can begin to feel good to you because you're with him. You feel special. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You feel special. Right. Okay. All right. So hopefully you found this one helpful and informative. Let us know in the comments section. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do it on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. Yes, if you think I can be helpful, please sign up. And of course, Coach Victoria is available for coaching. I look forward to talking with you. Just click on Margaret or Victoria or myself on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.